You know, I'm not much for horror movies. I mean, why scare yourself unnecessarily? The world's scary enough as it is. I don't need more stress. Unless the whole point is to distract yourself from the real worries of the real world. That's one reason to seek out fake trouble, to take your mind off real trouble. Or maybe you like fake trouble, the fictional stress of horror films, precisely because you know it's actually safe. The whole time you're scared, you really know it's going to be okay. I tell you this because it's my theory about so much of what the media party reports as calamities and crises. I mean, look at how they cover Canada's oil sands, for example. Big emitter is oil and gas in the oil sands. And you talk about that, and I understand the language you have to use. Filth, negligence, and greed. Our emissions are forecast to increase as we continue to develop the tar sands. The fastest growing source of carbon pollution in Canada isn't coal. It's this, the oil sands. Canada's biggest emitter, which is of course the oil and gas sector, particularly the oil sands. Our big problem has always been the oil sands. A wrong being perpetrated, just like the rest of the world saw apartheid, and they're willing to stand up and say, you're, you're we suggesting can't continue there's some to link use between oil. apartheid and the Canadian oil no, no, sands? No, no, no. All Did I'm you just saying, say that? I'm saying, Lots of factuals in there for uh, factual errors in there. For example, uh, the oil sands are not the largest emitter of carbon dioxide. The transportation sector is. But put aside the factual errors, that whole idea that the oil sands are the greatest demon in the world, equal to apartheid, that's what I'm talking about. Let alone no coverage of the benefits of the oil sands, or our alternatives like OPEC. But for that matter, take the theory of man-made global warming itself. I mean, it, it's fake. I'm not saying that the world doesn't warm and cool naturally over the course of centuries. We know it does. Anyone who has heard of the great ice ages when Canada was covered in a thick sheet of ice and knows that we are not now covered in a thick sheet of ice knows that the world warms and cools and always has. I'm talking about the theory of man-made global warming. First of all, I wish. I mean, much of Canada actually is still covered in a sheet of ice in the far north. There used to be massive forests in our far north. There are ancient petrified trees up there, but nothing can grow in the permafrost today. What Canadian wouldn't prefer Florida or California-style weather? But like high school kids who love a horror movie, the media party loves freaking out about their theory that we're all going to die in a massive permanent heat wave caused by the fact that we drive cars. Even though the United Nations' own global warming committee, called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, says the globe has not warmed at all in 18 years. All their predictions were just wrong. They call it a hiatus, which is just a hundred dollar word for a pause, which is a nice way of saying the theory is wrong. So why do journalists love to talk about gloom and doom of global warming? Why does the media party love to write stories about how the next generation will never know what snow is, how we have just a few years to change our evil ways to save the world? I think it's the horror movie phenomenon. I think it's fun for them to worry about that fake problem that suits their pre-existing narratives about the world, evil capitalism, evil oil companies, the rich West is to blame. We should feel guilty about a life of plenty. I've never seen a journalist actually live as if they truly believe any of this. Modern journalism is a high energy business in terms of fossil fuels jetting around the, uh, you know, jetting from city to city, the power needed to light a studio and for people to watch the news on a powered device at home or in their hands. No one would be in the media if they truly opposed fossil fuels. But that's the fun make-believe part of it. That's the horror movie, pretend. They get to beat up on their favorite safe political enemies, have a good worry about something they don't truly, truly believe is worrying, and feel like they had their social justice warrior mo moment. As opposed to dealing with the real crises of the day, say the threat of global terrorism. That threat contradicts their narratives. The evil isn't white Western liberal capitalism, it's Muslim terrorist groups. That threat isn't easily solved with a carbon tax or a wind turbine or whatever fix it is being pitched today. You have to root out an evil ideology, probably with military force. Which would you rather deal with as a lefty journalism, a journalist? The fake crisis of global warming or the real crisis of Muslim terrorism? Same thing with another pet media party passion, their hatred for long arms, that is, shotguns and rifles. The media and our entertainment media like Movies and music videos glamorize handguns, actually. But there's a demonization of long arms that duck hunters and farmers prefer, as if they're the source of crime in Canada. They're not. Uh, here's a breakdown of the murders in Canada over the last five years. Last year, for example, there were 510 murders in Canada, of which only 131 were done by guns. The rest were done by stabbings and beatings and 
of the guns used, criminals just don't use those long, bulky rifles or shotguns. According to Statistics Canada, where a gun is used in a violent crime, it's a rifle or a shotgun only 16% of the time. Criminals don't use the same guns that Farmer Jones does to scare off coyotes that were threatening his livestock or to go shoot some geese. Criminals who commit violence, according to Statistics Canada, are typically in the city and are often in gangs, and they prefer handguns which have been restricted in Canada for nearly a century. Criminals don't register their guns. So why the media obsession with the long gun registry? I think it's an even lamer version of that horror movie analogy I made earlier. I think the media knows where the crime problem is in Canada. It's downtown. It's gangs, often ethnic gangs, who shake down their own people. In Vancouver, in Toronto, firearms violence is handgun violence, which is gang violence which is violence often amongst certain immigrant groups. And so many other murders in this country are on Indian reserves. The media party is quick to point the finger at the federal government. Why aren't they doing a national inquiry? The killing of Manitoba teenager Tina Fontaine has many calling for a national inquiry into missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Tina Fontaine, whose death is sparking renewed calls for a national inquiry. The discovery of the body of 15-year-old Tina Fontaine this week prompted the Canadian Human Rights Commission to add its voice to those calls. Her death generated renewed calls for a national inquiry into missing and murdered Aboriginal women. In an outpouring of anger, Tina Fontaine's death has triggered new calls for a public inquiry into the hundreds of missing and murdered Aboriginal women and girls. The murder of 15-year-old Tina Fontaine is renewing the push for a full inquiry into what's being called a national tragedy. Well, look, the majority of murdered Aboriginal women were murdered by someone they knew, a family member or a close acquaintance. If you are a guilty white liberal reporter, do you really want to touch that fact? It's a real problem. How do we fix the social problems on Indian reserves? According to police records, most murders of Aboriginal women involved a drunk murderer, an unemployed murderer, and a repeat offender who becomes a murderer. Do you want to talk about that stuff if you're a Toronto Liberal at the CBC? Do you want to talk about the challenges of some immigrant groups in Canada and the lure of gangs? Do you even want to talk about the glamorization of gangs and guns in popular culture, in music videos? No, you do not. Because these subjects make you uncomfortable. You don't want to say anything critical, even constructive criticism, about Indian reserves or ethnic street gangs. First of all, you probably know little about them if you're a liberal journalist. <laughs> Second of all, you don't want to be called racist. So the long gun registry is your way out. You get to take a strong stand. But it's against rural duck hunters and farmers who have the lowest crime rates in the country. You get to sound really butch about fighting back against guns. But luckily, you don't have to talk about Indian reserves or ethnic gangs because you are a liberal. You choose your fake controversy, your placebo, your horror movie, to pretend you actually did something. The $2 billion price tag of the failed gun registry, the higher the better for a liberal. It's proof of just how much you care about solving the problem. This is the theme of today's show. The fake problems the media party loves to hype up precisely because they're fake. And some of the real problems the media party doesn't dare talk about precisely because they're real and they're problems and they don't fit nicely into the liberal narrative. In other words, it's the kind of show tonight you will not see on any other TV channel in Canada. More Source still ahead.